Hey, that's Chris. I'm Brandon. We're with Neon Trees, and we are today with Rock Forever Magazine. Hey guys, it's Tori from Rock Forever Magazine, and I am here right now with Neon Trees. How's hey. it going today? What's up? You guys seem very energetic here today in Orlando. How have you been enjoying the city? It's great. It's nice. Yeah? Yeah, the Did weather is, it's pretty warm though. It's a it little is. bit too warm, but it's better than cold. True. Chris True. got a new bicycle. Did you take your bike out for a ride? No, no, I didn't. But oh, I, I did make it to Epcot yesterday. Oh, really? And there was like a total, like crazy storm right in the middle. Oh, it was no. totally warm and sunny and I didn't even see any clouds. And then we went on a ride and we came out and it was just like wind blowing the rain all over. There was <laughs> oh, thunder. Man. Yeah. No, that was part Strollers. of the uh, simulation, the yeah. storm simulation that yeah. Disney can do now. Strollers uh, were blowing over. No, no. One thing that That's is violent. unique to Orlando is you guys have an all bass guitar shop. We do. And I am the bass. Apparently. Yes, I am the bass guitarist in Neon Trees. And so I went to Bass Central and it was awesome. It, it was like Disneyland for me. Yeah, it must have been you just know? heaven. Yeah. Just to be, yeah, <laughs> bass guitars, bass amps, and everything. It was fun. Well, I am glad you've had a good time here in Florida. And at least it's not raining today for the show, so all of your fans are probably camping out front right now or something. Mm -hmm. Well, we are going to start with some finished sentence for you guys. Now, your favorite place to visit on tour, aside from Florida, is... Portland, Voodoo Donuts. Oh, really? That place, I've heard a lot about it. It's as good as it sounds then. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> it's, it's some of them are fun rather than, like, this is the most delicious, you know bread that you'll ever eat but it's sometimes it's just about the fun that goes into it right, right. and aside from florida i really enjoy uh new orleans yeah i love the food there mm. well you know what it is mardi gras here in universal right now so i guess we sort of get a taste in new orleans nice. for a little while and now your go-to dance move is you guys have great moves on stage so this better be good <laughs> well, i made up a, a dance move called the uh, funky elbow so can we demonstrate or is there not uh, enough space on this couch you know it's, it's just kind of you know kind of dancing around but then you know just kind of throwing some elbows out <laughs> i think everyone's done it at some point it's very 70s inspired guilty of that yeah. How about you? i think the grab the one foot and jump over it with the other yes you know that's, that's definitely play. that's the go-to i'd call that, that really the kid is. and play or the uh, hacky sack something <laughs> like that nobody doesn't like that move True, very true. And now you're the most starstruck when you met. Oh, um, I think, well, Yoko Ono. Mm. That all I could say was Double Fantasy, which is just the name of her record. You know, that would be like me seeing, uh, you know, Tommy Lee Jones and just being able to say Men in Black. <laughs> say, yes, I was in that movie. But anyhow, so yeah, I was just so nervous that that's all I could could get out was her album title starstruck moment i'd say is a tie between slash and conan o'brien mm. two very different ones yeah. <laughs> that is Although for sure they were on one episode together they okay. went craigslist shopping for a guitar <laughs> showing up at people's houses it was hilarious oh my gosh well how'd you end up meeting both of them was it at the same time nope okay no it was not but it was awesome we we played conan's show and uh, we met Slash on the roof of a hotel in Hollywood because he was hosting a, like an outdoor concert event. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, uh, we were playing. Yeah. No, oh, that's awesome. He's hanging out, you know, with it, Slash. And he's actually really nice. Really? Yeah. Awesome. And now the craziest rumor you've read about yourself is, or about the band in Man, general? The craziest rumor, um, well, definitely, you know, stuff about... Uh, you know, Tyler and Elaine uh, being together oh, or people whatever. people shipping it, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so uh, that's obviously never true. But, nope. <laughs> um, I don't know, well, you know. A rumor might have started today at our a promo that we had earlier today. Oh, the no. lady announced that Tyler sought treatment and was, like, seeing a professional about it. And it was about, you know, more of, like, emotional stuff that he was dealing oh, with no. and the way it came off is like it was like alcohol counseling no. or, oh, yeah. or like some he, kind like of addiction counseling. He went to rehab yeah definitely and some and people started coming up saying congratulations I'm 12 years sober myself oh. and we're like wait what are they talking about and then we <laughs> we figured that out so, so that's a new new yeah. rumor. Yeah you might want to check TMZ yeah. after this interview and see if it's everywhere already and last one your most embarrassing high school memory is 
We all have them. I don't remember high school. That might be a good thing, though, right? <laughs> yeah. I know mine, mine was uh, showing up late to uh, senior prom because I was elected uh, or to uh, be the homecoming king, and I guess they were uh, chanting my name, and I was late which you can ask the band, I'm notorious for being late. So I was even oh, no. late to the prom and they were chanting my name and I like missed out and I showed up. They're like, dude, where were you? No. You had a moment and you missed it. <laughs> At least you weren't late for this interview or else that would be sad. Right? What about you? Anything good? You know, I'm really good at blocking out those negative memories. <laughs> I honestly can't think of anything. I'm sure I had my fair share of embarrassing moments, but I honestly can't think of any, which yeah. is awesome. That is a good thing, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> And now we got to talk about your music a little bit. Now that we've gotten all the random questions out of the way, your album Pop Psychology is out right now. So for anybody who hasn't heard it yet or isn't too familiar with the band, if they could listen to one song from the album as a first impression, which Ooh. one should it be and why? Uh, I think you might have different answers to this. I don't know. I think track one, which is Love in the, first, uh, love in, love in the 21st Century, I think that is it's just an instant catchy song that just feels good. The first, first time... Um, I heard the melody of it. I was I was sold. Mm-hmm. What about you? Yeah, I'd say the the for this direction of of the album that we wanted to go in that sleeping with a friend uh, for us, you know, because there are some of those songs that sound like uh, hey, you know, this is this is neon trees, and then we wanted to you know throw something new in the mix as well. And for me, when I first heard sleeping with a friend was a demo and i thought oh you guys you just master this mm-hmm. like i hadn't even played on it yet and i thought it was so good mm-hmm. like i don't even need to i wasn't even thinking about myself yeah because usually it's like well I, I gotta be part of this i gotta be part of everything and it was so good that i thought i don't even need to play on it just put it out it's so good yeah. but we ended up obviously you know redoing it and then putting it out so uh, but it is hard. It, you know, there's so many because I also think uh, living in another world mm-hmm. um, is just a you know a great snapshot yeah. of of the band you know working together as well. So yeah, and that one uh, sleeping with a friend has definitely become a fan favorite. And I think and that's the best song live yeah. too. Yeah, even though it's like on the album, it might not be my number one pick mm-hmm. live. I think the energy of that song is really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'll show. find out tonight at the show. Yeah. And anyone else is going to any of the tour dates? Hint, hint. You probably yes, should. You should. <laughs> yes, definitely. Well, because we've had this thing recently where, like, for for the shows that haven't been sold out, uh, someone will say, "Oh, I really want to come to the show." We're like, okay, yeah. Well, then then come. Well, but I haven't been able to get tickets. <laughs> okay. It's one thing, like, if you if you're gonna ask, like, just ask. Right. Because we love to, you know, when we can accommodate people or, or, you know, give do giveaways. Like we, you know, we love doing that. But for someone that... Everybody knows it's a just, friend with internet access. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's like, hey, if you can, you can go buy, you can buy a ticket. But if you really can't, like, then, then say. Right. But, it, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just a funny thing because they're kind of like saying they're waiting like... Well, will you get me in? <laughs> Mow some lawns and yeah. come see the yeah. entry. And I did actually hear in some other interviews that your singer lyrically was inspired by some therapy sessions, as you had sort of mentioned earlier. Um, but what about you guys? I want to hear about your inspirations. Where did you guys draw inspiration my, from musically? M- my inspiration came from a technique that uh, was used back in the uh, the 50s and 60s in re- you know recording studios so one thing unique for neon trees uh, for our sound is we double the bass guitar with like a bass synthesizer okay. to give you know kind of a modern sound and and you know thicken things up uh well back in the in the golden days and uh you know even bands like the the beach boys uh or glenn campbell like you know was all these classic artists um, the bass was too thumpy to be able to be heard through small speakers because uh, car stereos, home stereos back then had small, tiny speakers, so the bass wouldn't translate. So what they would do is take a baritone guitar, which is tuned like a fifth lower than a regular guitar, and they would double the bass line so that it was like this, you know, they call it tic-tac. And so that it had kind of a percussive sound that doubled the bass line. And so I kind of approached it like that to where uh, there's the deep low end if you have like a really good stereo system, but then there's another like, you know, kind of a higher, brighter, 
uh, you know, run of the bass line so that it's, it's more audible. And I think you, you're hearing that more and more in dance music these days where it's, it's kind of ironic that music is created to be heard in earbuds and, and laptops. Uh, but you'll hear like some of the frequencies that are chosen, especially with kick drums in dance music where it sounds like a cardboard box. Mm. But it's it's a trick. One thing I really like about people listening to stuff in headphones and on their uh, on their laptops is that the guitar comes through oh, a little yeah. bit better. <laughs> <laughs> There's no bias there or anything, <laughs> right? The right now, it would go ring, <laughs> ring. <laughs> nice. So, where'd you find inspiration? Oh, um, Same thing? Nope. well, uh, I think on "Living in Another World," the song he mentioned earlier, uh, "Talking Heads," I think were a big influence on that one. Mm. Um, the song Once in a Lifetime, it's just this solid groove throughout the, the song and pretty simple, funky guitars. Mm -hmm. I think we definitely tapped into something on that one. Um, let's see. Oh, I know there was a part on um, Unavoidable where I kind of wanted to capture the, the magic of uh, Chris Isaac's... Um, uh, what is it? Uh, I want to say Cruel Summer, but it's no, not... No, no, uh, no. It's... Um, why can't I think of it? Um, We're having a blank moment. Right. Uh, you know what? I wicked, think maybe right. just game, in the middle of the game. game. Yeah. Wicked Game. Okay. Yeah, Wicked Game. How, how embarrassing. We got it. We got it. So, yeah, we, we totally you wanted to You were just thinking about the girl on the video, in the video. <laughs> and you're like, what's it called? <laughs> you know. Anyway. Um, yeah, just there was there's just like this tone to it and this just real this it's just real moody and well I don't know if you know this but when you were recording that we were in the control room and we'd call it the uh, the boys of summer lick uh -huh. as well so it, it that's why you were thinking cruel summer you yeah the two yeah names. boys of summer <laughs> and yeah wicked game well, so. gotcha. And I actually heard in another interview that you guys started working on this album um, really early on, and so you didn't have the pressures of a label. It was a work in progress for a long time. Um, so did you, towards the end, maybe second-guess yourself or start thinking about what other people were going to think when they heard it? No, not at all? I love that. <laughs> no, that, that was the beauty of, um, of us having our space to do it. We were able to just do something and cultivate something that we all really loved. And I feel like between the four of us, we have a pretty good collective taste. And, and we, at that point, we were very confident that, you know, whoever we showed it to was going to like it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and in the end, it, it's, it's not that important how much they like it. It's how good it is. Yeah. I guess some yeah. artists, depending on who it is, have different motives. Some people just want to be popular and some people want to love what they do. So... Yeah, well, there's. I've read in interviews before where people said, you know, if we were the only ones that heard this, like we'd still put it out, we'd still be happy with it. Mm -hmm. And I never understood that because I thought, well, of course you want everyone that possible to hear it. Right. But you know, it, it means something else, and it's uh, and and with this record, I finally understood what that meant. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, you don't want to compromise your sound or your direction just to satisfy people. Right. But if you can make it your own and be happy with it and you know please the masses you know that's obviously the yeah. uh, the goal yeah so what did you guys do differently on this album compared to previous releases how did you sort of grow this time around um well one of the things that we did is we we got together with all the songs we played them uh in our studio uh we even recorded uh rough versions of all of them and then we went our separate ways and went into the studio individually uh, to cut all of our parts. And then our producers took all those and kind of uh, chopped it all up. Mm -hmm. Almost like someone would make maybe like a hip hop record yeah. or something like where we were sampling our own music and then taking, taking all those pieces uh, and just making, you know, modern art really. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was a new thing for mm -hmm. us to do it like that. Um, I think also using a lot of unorthodox, um, you know, methods where maybe they would play the guitar back through a walkie-talkie or something like that, mm -hmm. and just think, or, or using file cabinets uh, to bang on for a percussive instrument. It's so creative. In, in the past, when when we've talked with different producers about recording us, it's always been like, oh, we really want to capture the live sound of you guys because, mm -hmm. well, we we really kind of pride ourselves on our live show. Um, 
but uh, producers have always wanted to capture that. But it, it usually it's, it doesn't quite translate to a CD. And so, I don't know, there are certain things that you can do on a CD that you can't do live that are really cool. And there are certain things that you can do on stage that you can't really yeah. put on a CD. And so, so you kind of mm. have to embrace the strong points of recording onto a CD. And I think that's what we did this time around yeah. is we, we fully utilized those studio tactics. Yeah. And what do you think is the biggest misconception about the band that maybe you guys would like to clear up right now? I'd say that, uh, you know, with, with us being lumped into, uh, you know, pop music categories, we're, we're, Neon Trees is available to be heard on a lot of different formats, and so there's a lot of different types of bands that may come on before us or after us on the radio. Some of them that don't have the same credibility as like, you know, a good, hardworking, honest band. And that's what, what we are. We're still a, a garage rock band playing pop music at the end of the day. And, you know, there's no, um, you know, getting around that really. So if there were, I've heard some people in the past, you know, say that we don't deserve things or we haven't paid our dues. And it's like, okay, well, you weren't there in the van tours that we did. Uh, you weren't there for the the hours on end of songwriting before there were record labels or tours involved and so yeah i mean you guys have been hustling for a long time i was reading your wikipedia page there's a lot of history there yeah. me and tyler have been playing together for 13 years i think yeah yep so a long time yeah <laughs> and now um something that's really cool about this album in particular is that there were some heavy subject topics subject matters we'll say um that you were writing about but at the same time it had a very poppy fun vibe how did you go about balancing that so all the songs sounded cohesive i think that there's you know a, a lot of music that um that has that you know there's just a lot of uh you know metaphors and symbolism in music and so I think that, you know, you can address those serious topics, but still have fun with it. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, I think that it's, uh, it's just about finding the balance. Yeah. And one song that's come up several times in this interview, Living in Another World, that's one song that was a total standout for me on this album. And I want to know the lyrical inspiration maybe behind that a little bit. Well, I feel like Tyler has never felt like he fit in. And that's always been a struggle for him and, and dealing with uh, inner demons and stuff. Um, but also he talks about how, you know, music has really kept him motivated throughout hard times and stuff. Um, in, the, in the bridge, he says, three chords and a beat keep me alive, mm -hmm. you know. And um, for us and for a lot of our fans, uh, music is just so important. It's, it's a motivator, something that inspires us. And um, it's something that unites us, even if we feel like we're totally different from whatever the cool kids or, or, or whatever, um, you know, music gives us purpose and makes us feel good. Yeah. I love that. I love that message. Something a lot of people can relate to, I'm mm -hmm. sure. And you've released quite a few music videos recently, a lot of fun ones. But one that I just thought was a blast to watch, I love you, but I hate your friends. Mm -hmm. Such a good video. What was your favorite moment from behind the scenes of filming? From behind the scenes, I think it was, you know, preparing a lot of the stuff that we were working on. Um, but I think, you know, the awesome thing for me, the awesome thing for me was uh, that we had the scene where I just got to eat a hamburger. I mean, how could you go wrong with that, <laughs> right? Like, okay. Not this just is, this is going to be really tough, but we're going to get in and out Burger and you're going to sit and you're going to eat it. Uh, and we're just going to film you just doing that. And I'm like, okay, but they're like, no, no buts about it. It's like, okay. So oh, no, you didn't want I can't, to wear the wig though. I didn't want to wear the wig <laughs> because I, well, I just felt that it's, I, I mean, I thought it was a, a good Andy Warhol wig because uh, it was a, a nod to Andy Warhol's film, The Hamburger. But um, I saw with my beard that uh, I almost looked like the, uh, I looked like Andy Richter. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what I felt more like Andy Richter, where like with a beard. But um, anyhow, 
it, it worked out. I can't wait for this. We have to make a sequel just so I can eat more hamburgers during videos. <laughs> I mean, really, isn't that just the best part of being in a band? Just eating the burgers on the music video sets? Right? Probably. No. no why not? not. <laughs> what about you? Did you have any fun scenes well, you like to share? a couple things. I really liked the nod to Gallagher that I got to mm -hmm. play mm -hmm. by smashing the watermelons. That was <laughs> yeah. super fun, hamming that up. And then also... We were talking about the scene where Tyler's eating a banana and I'm crying. Yeah. Um, we joked about me working up a cry bubble, where I, like a spit bubble when <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm crying. Ew. And And then I actually did it. No. And so that's, if you blink, you miss it. But there's okay. a cry bubble. Now Gotta find it. Look for it. Yeah. I think like, this it, is the challenge. It's like pop-up video, yeah. you know, yeah. within itself. This is gonna be the challenge for everyone watching the interview now. They're probably gonna go minimize this and try and find that. And um, you've always stayed true to your signature sound with your music, but you have evolved quite a bit between releases. So when you listen back to your first album now, what is your favorite memory that comes to mind or what does come to mind when you listen back now? I just think about when we all moved into my parents' house in California for, I don't know, like six months or so. Mm -hmm. And we practiced every day and wrote a song a week and half of what uh, is on habits is is from those times and so um yep. we were really close at that time for better or for worse <laughs> we were kind of at each other's throats at some yeah. points but it was also like a good bonding experience for us and we grew a lot musically yeah. and so like those times are very real whereas um you know songs that we that we do now like we're comfortable, we're having a good time, we're able to tour, live our dreams and stuff like that. Um, so there's like, well, that's awesome. But yeah. the other times, you know, are very... Um, it's more in your face. It, it, yeah, kind of. and, it, and it goes deeper. Yeah. You know, pers on a personal level. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's cool because I was the last one to join the band and they were already living in the house. Uh, and so then I moved in and I think within a couple months, I knew them better than people I'd been in bands with for two years, mm. you know, just because of the, the it was a lifestyle. Being in Neon Trees wasn't just a band, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it was, sure. man. Gonna make a shirt. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are on a headlining tour right now. I assume it's going good so far, right? It's yes. It's going great, yeah. Well, what are your plans for right after this the fans can look forward to? Uh, after this, uh, we're gonna make a, another video. Oh. Uh, we're not gonna the tell sequel? you. The sequel? Well, if, even if it's not filmed, we'll just make sure. We always talk about it. We want, we want the In-N-Out truck to come to like one of our productions sometime. So maybe we can work on that. Uh, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do a video for our, our next single. Uh, and then just plan our international stuff. You know, that we hope one of these days that we'll get to go to Mexico uh, and South America and we'll go back to Southeast Asia, Australia, stuff like that. Awesome. Sounds exciting. Yeah. And anybody who wants to follow you on your Twitter, Facebook, find your music online, you want to give a shout out to all your links? Uh, yeah, you can follow us on uh, Instagram at official underscore neon trees. Uh, you can also uh, hit us up on Twitter just at neon trees. Uh, you can also hit me up individually at neon BMC. Chris Cordley. <laughs> yep. All right. That's it. Cool. Peace. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out. This has been awesome. Everybody watching, check out Neon Trees. If you haven't already listened to their album, Pop Psychology, you must. And subscribe to our channel for more interviews. So I'll see you next time. Bye.